Okay, this is mine. I think we're going to do two more questions. I'll do one more and Alicia will do one more and then we'll kind of uh, do the wrap up and answer questions in the chat, either chat, the Twitter chat or the GoToMeeting chat. Okay, so understanding tissue graphs. A student asked, I'm having a hard time understanding the different types of graphs and how to code them. How do I know when to use more than one code? I think I have one more slide before I go to document camera. Yes. Okay, so the first thing that we need to understand are the types of graphs out there. There are auto graphs, which basically auto meaning self. So it's basically a graph coming from the patient. Then there's um, homologous, I hope I'm not butchering that word, graphs, which are also known as homo or allographs. Um, homo meaning same. So it's coming from the same species. So uh, another, a human donor. Um, usually a cadaver, because most people that are alive don't Go around donating their skin <laughs> um, and then the third type is the um, hetero or xeno graft and that could be like a man-made or synthetic type of graft and those are becoming more and more popular and you'll see the code selection growing and growing because of all the different types and then there's the animal grafts okay so hetero or xeno graft and the the codes in the cpt book are going to have those terms it's important to understand that all right, so if you have your CPT manuals, I'm going to start on page 71. And normally when I start teaching graphs, and I'm going to be talking tonight about the free graphs where they're, you know, um, in the case of an autograph, lifted from one part of the body and put on another part. It's not a twisting around of the skin and making a flap or something like that. Maybe I'll, I'll cover that on, a, on another webinar. But what I was going to talk about tonight is the, the free graphs. So I normally ask, has anyone ever laid sod down on their yard? And, you know, half the group will say, yes, I have. So do you normally just lay sod down or do you do something first? And you normally prepare the ground, you, you dig it up, you make sure the, the soil's loose and ready to take that new sod, because the goal is when you lay the sod down, you want the roots of the grass and the sod to take into the new soil. Well, that's the way it is when you do a skin graft. You want the, the new skin, the graft, to take on the recipient site. So it all starts with these surgical prep codes. Now there's lots of guidelines that precede this, but I'm gonna dive right into where the codes are. There's two bubbles. Um, 15002, which bubbles in its indented code 15003, and then 15004, which bubbles in the add on code 15005. The difference between the two is location, location, location. All right, so 002 is trunk, arms, or legs, and 004 is pretty much everything else. Bubbling and highlighting is um, a trademarked uh, technique that, um, we're, we're known for as well. And this is how you do it. It's actually quite simple. You just bubble in the parent code, the non-indented one, with any indented codes and parenthetical notes, and that becomes your bubble. And then you highlight everything after the semicolon, which every indented code is then highlighted. Okay. So once you do that, then you can quickly look at the difference between your two bubbles. It jumps out at you, you know, trunk, hands, or legs, and then we had the rest of the body areas underlined here. Um, what I wrote in both of these bubbles is these are recipients. So when you're talking about face, scalp, eyelids, it's talking about the recipient site. So this is all in the guidelines that precede the bubbles, but I like to transfer the gist of the notes to my actual code manual because on the board exam or even in real world coding, you're going to be looking at the codes. You're not going to go reread the guidelines unless you have to. Okay, so the parent code is saying first 100 square centimeters or 1% of body area of infants and or children, which is defined as uh, 10 years or younger. That's in the guidelines. And then the add-on code is each additional 100 square centimeters. Now, what I love about these codes is they say, or part thereof. I wish all CPT codes were that specific. So what it's saying is, if you have 150, you can code one unit of 004 and one unit of 005, because 50 is a part thereof of, of the additional 100 square centimeters. And unfortunately, CPT is not consistent in some areas, they will consider, you know, part of that amount will count. 
Others will say, no, you have to get the full amount to count it. So, and, and the reason is you have different committees working in different sections of CPT. So obviously you have dermatologists um, working in this, this area. Okay, so that's the prep code. So that's going to be regardless of whether you have an allo, an autograft, a xenograft, you have to prep the receiving area, the recipient site. Now, going into the, the actual graft codes themselves, we need to look for those buzzwords, the autograft, the allograft, the xenograft. So we're going to start with autograft. This is the one that has the most codes next to those, those man-made ones. Um, what you need to understand is when they talk about split thickness and full thickness. If you um, recall the, let me see if I can pull up the picture real quick here. Here we go. The anatomy picture of the skin. Okay. You've got, this is on page 57 of your CPT book. The dermis is also known as the true skin. So always remember that dermis is key. And partial thickness would be right about, you know, where this line is. You're going partway through the dermis. Now, obviously, the graft will take better the, the thicker it is. The thicker your sod is, the better chance you're going to have that it's going to take, okay? But it's a trade-off. If they take a full thickness graft, then the donor area is going to suffer. So they have to make that decision what the trade-off is. So sometimes they'll do a partial thickness. Sometimes they'll do a full thickness, okay? So now that you have that in mind, these will make a little bit more sense. So um, we've got a pinch graft, which is just what it says. It's a little teeny pinch of tissue. Then our next bubble goes 1, 1, 5, 100 to 101. I wrote split because it's a split thickness, and it's an autograft. So I write my little buzzwords, split, auto, and this is a recipient site bubble. And then we've got location mentioned here. And so if you picture this... Um, in a real world coding scenario or even a board exam question and you know you have a couple questions by doing this bubbling and highlighting it's going to jump right out oh this one's a split graft this one's an epidermal graft okay or it could be like oh these they're both epidermal but the difference is location trunk arms or legs versus everything else Okay, or you could have it compared to a bubble that's that's not an autograft. Okay, so you know, bubble and highlight and write your buzzwords, and, and that will help you. So you need a code for the prep area, and you need a code for the graft. Um, let me go through just a few more so you can see how the bubbling and highlighting works for these. 120 to 121 is your split auto. This is just another location. Now, if you'll notice, they weren't in order. If we go back to the previous page, we had a split auto followed by two epi autos, okay? So that's why we always want to compare and contrast all the codes in the category to make sure that we have all the choices. Then uh, bubble 130 and 135 are the dermal bubbles. The difference between the two is location. Once you're in there, it's first hundred square centimeter each additional or part thereof. Then we've got um, tissue cultured. What they're doing now is rather than taking the, the donated skin and then immediately grafting it, they'll prepare it and have it culture for, I don't know how long it typically is, but again, the goal is to make it prepared so it will take better on the site. Okay, so these are the, the uh, culture, tissue cultured autograft. Here's our full thickness, so 15200 and 15220, 15240, 15260. The difference between all of them is the location of where these are occurring. Then we move on to the skin substitute graphs on page 73. And you can see these are new for 2012, application of skin substitute to trunk, arms, or legs. And it says application because obviously they're not, you know, removing it from the donor site. Okay. By the way, the, the questioner did ask how many codes. Um, if you need to also code for repairing the donor area, you can code for that separately. The guidelines tell you that, you know, right in the, in the print there. So you, you code um, the prep of the area, you code the graft code, and then you code any repair to the, to the donor area that you need to do. Okay. Um, and so there's some more skin substitute codes. And then we go into flaps. Okay, so that's just for the for the free graphs. I hope that was helpful.